Well, good afternoon, everyone. And if I could um, begin by thanking Elders past, present and emerging. Uh, Lindell, uh, thank you for that very kind introduction. Um, Christina, thank you for that, um, that overview. So it, um, I've been to a number of these in the, over the last six years and whilst there are some challenges, that was one of the more positive overviews that I've heard um, at one of these functions, so that was pleasing. Um, and Jared, um, my pleasure to be here today and thanks again for the introduction. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to run through today is just to provide, if I could, um, an economic update. I want to talk about the mid-year um, revised estimates report, touch on the government's priorities. Uh, we're releasing the final terms of reference for the state sector review today, and also want to just touch on at the end uh, some thoughts around climate change. Now, in terms of uh, Tasmania's economy, uh, and the previous speaker touched on it, um, in terms of state final demand, uh, in, from, in terms of growth, we lead the rest of the country. That's a fantastic position to be in for a, a small jurisdiction like Tasmania. Uh, importantly, in terms of business confidence, um, we lead the country as well. And again, you know, when we came to government uh, six years ago, one of our key aims was to ensure that uh, we could rebuild business confidence. For a small jurisdiction like this, um, confidence is king. And if businesses are feeling confident, if consumers are feeling confident, then our economy uh, works very well. And I'm very pleased that um, the private sector especially has responded to the government's policies and we do have a very confident business sector. Interestingly enough, and it's something that um, I'd like to point out often, is that uh, when we came to government, two out of every three small businesses thought that the previous government's policies were working against them. Uh, so we had a good starting point to work from and I'm very pleased that we've been able to, uh, through our policies and through our actions, uh, end up in a place where businesses in Tasmania are very confident. In terms of what this has uh, translated to, Tasmania now has an unemployment rate of 5.8%. Uh, it's the, the uh, starting to catch, in fact it's almost at the five year national average which I think is important. But uh, one of the key things that, that um, I do want to point out is that since we came to government, 21,100 more jobs have been uh, generated. Um, and I want to thank the private sector for that largely. The public sector and our bit government businesses have played a role, but ultimately it's because of the private sector uh, having the courage to invest, uh, to employ, and what we're seeing now is uh, much greater opportunity for Tasmanians. Importantly, um, the growth rate in terms of uh, employment growth at 3.5% in trend terms was the highest in the nation. And so, for, again, for a small jurisdiction, we're doing very well. The unemployment rate I've touched on, 1.7% um, lower than when we first came to government, uh, and we're working very hard to drive it lower still. In terms of population, and Treasury were very quick to point this out to me early in my term as... Um, uh, Treasurer, and I note that we have a Treasury table here, and I should just take uh, the moment to, um, to thank Treasury for the work that they have done over the last six years. They are a, an exemplar organisation, and certainly you get frank and fearless advice from them. Um, and uh, their Secretary, I believe, leads uh, you know, one of the best Treasuries in the country, albeit a small Treasury with um, limited resources, but does a fantastic job, and like the state, punches above its weight. Uh, in terms of population growth, uh, if there are jobs in Tasmania, uh, our population increases. Simple correlation. That's what's happened at every other occasion that we have had employment growth in this state, that our population grows. And so what we're seeing uh, is a very strong correlation in terms of population growth. Uh, around 6,000 people uh, uh, in was the increase last year in terms of our population. And what's really interesting and important is that what we're seeing is a broader mix in terms of uh, that growth. We're now seeing uh, a higher percentage of um, uh, younger families coming to Tasmania uh, and, uh, and professionals coming to Tasmania. I think as we continue with our infrastructure program and we uh, roll that out as we announced in last year's budget, um, we will see an increase in the number of tradespeople, uh, engineers, that will see Tasmania as a vital, as a uh, uh, an important um, opportunity for themselves, both in terms of career, but certainly in terms of um, their families. 
The population growth that we're seeing at the moment is the highest annual population growth in the state in 30 years. Um, it's growing at twice the long-term trend rate and it's now four times greater than the rate of growth which was about 0.3% when we first came to government. Uh, but again, with population growth, uh, there comes challenges and that was one of the reasons why in last year's budget we rolled out what was uh, a record $3.6 billion worth of infrastructure spend for the state uh, to ensure that we can build the schools, the hospitals, the roads, the bridges that we, that we need. In terms of tourism uh, and our retail se sectors, and we touched on this um, in Christina's presentation, our tourism sector is growing very strongly. And in fact, um, uh, the spend now uh, by visitors to the state is more than $2.5 billion, and around 1.32 million visitors come to the, to the state. One of the, and I point this out in terms of Chinese visitation, uh, we have around 3% of our visitation is Chinese, so around 40,000 um, visitors. The vast majority of our visitation is from the eastern seaboard, uh, close enough to 85%, and touching on what Christina had to say, in fact, uh, around Australians staying at home, um, out of this we may just see uh, some opportunity emerge uh, as, um, as things progress, and I'll have some more to say about that um, shortly. In terms of retail, one of the best litmus tests for an economy. Um, our retail growth uh, to the end of December was around 6.4%, the strongest um, growth uh, in the country. Um, again, it demonstrates that we've got uh, strong uh, uh, consumer sentiment, that uh, people are positive and that they are continuing to spend. I do note though, and I'd say this um, in Launceston as well, you know, there are obviously uh, the channels that people are purchasing on are changing. And I think that both um, you know, in terms of bricks and mortar retail and in terms of, um, of how we engage with people into our CBD areas especially, I think that there's a conversation that we need to have about more experiential retail to actually bring people back to some of those, those areas. There's probably also some thinking that landlords might need to do because the market is certainly changing. In terms of the housing sector, um, and again, this has been a challenging sector for the government. Um, but the market has responded to the uh, policies that we have rolled out. Importantly, uh, in terms of the broader country, we have one of the stronger uh, housing sectors uh, in terms of growth uh, compared to anywhere else in the country. Uh, we're seeing more houses come out of the ground. And I know that the, the Minister for Housing, and I've said this on a number of occasions as Treasurer, um, now, when you have houses, when you have challenges in the housing sector, you, know, you need to ensure that you can build more houses. Um, and what we're seeing through a range of policy measures is uh, the market uh, respond, more houses being built, uh, more opportunities being provided. And again, that's been a very strong underpinning of our broader economy because build a house and you've got you include not only uh, the trades but also everything that you've got to put in the house to um, to fit it out and to furnish it and therefore everybody gets a piece of uh, the action. Now in terms of building approvals, uh, we were the only jurisdiction to see an increase in dwelling approvals of 4% compared to the year before. Uh, all other jurisdictions were in decline and so our market continues to grow. Uh, in terms of commencements and completions, uh, we lead the nation as shown in terms of um, building work commenced but in terms of completions again, uh, we're also the fastest growing uh, jurisdiction in the country. Now what that has led into is to have a very strong uh, GSP. Into the, the economy of Tasmania, and I must admit I was very pleased last year when I was able to point out that we were growing faster than Victoria, uh, almost twice as fast as New South Wales in terms of um, gross state product which for a small jurisdiction um, is an outstanding result. And again, it links back to the confidence that we have in our uh, business and our community, uh, importantly the fact that we have businesses that are prepared to invest and the fact that underpinning that we have a growing population. Uh, all 19 industries in the right hand slide um, grew, which is the first time that that has actually happened, that all 19 industry sectors have grown since the series began uh, nearly 30 years ago. 
So we're not reliant on any one particular industry and we have a broad based economy. Sectorally, uh, no, particularly, no particular sector takes up more than around 13% of um, our overall economy. The graph um, is a little, looks a little misleading, but with the, uh, the percentages, um, uh, that's the growth rate in the individual um, sectors. The 13% uh, is in terms of the overall um, sectoral component. Now, in terms of the mid-year update, if you look at what we thought we'd do in the budget forecast, um, two and three quarter percent cent gross state product, um, state final demand around two and a half, employment growing at three quarters of a percent, 60.5 for um, participation, uh, unemployment uh, and uh, the other um, indicators as they are. Uh, Treasury, I'm pleased in the update, revised up uh, all of the uh, forecasts for this year's budget, um, GSP 3%, stronger state final demand, um, stronger growth in employment, uh, increased the participation rate, unemployment rate uh, revised down, uh, CPI which is challenging, um, but where we see the real growth in CPIs as a result of, um, of what occurs uh, in terms of our tourism and hospitality sector. Uh, with alcohol, um, with um, uh, food and other beverages, uh, accommodation, etc., and that tends to, to push up our CPI, uh, especially in the, the last quarter of, um, of each uh, calendar year. And again, we're seeing population growth uh, being uh, written up as well. So, as I say, a very hard working Frank and Fearless Treasury, but um, you know, with this set of numbers, I'm very pleased that they provided them. Now, I want to talk about economic um, challenges and just touch on the coronavirus and bushfires. And in terms of the coronavirus, you know, fortunately at this stage uh, we have tested um, uh, 22 people, we've provided 24 tests and all of them have been negative. And the impact that we're seeing is largely on those businesses that rely primarily on the Chinese market. Obviously, we've had uh, a number of smaller businesses that focus primarily on Chinese visitation and we're working closely with them. We put out a, uh, a hotline number a couple of weeks ago and to this stage we've had around 12 to 13 businesses in all that have actually made contact and we're working with those businesses um, in terms of the challenges that they face. And some have been affected more so than others. Uh, in terms of the public health challenge, um, the Director uh, of Public Health, Mark Beach, I think has done a sterling job and in fact our, uh, immediately we ensured that the additional resources were available should we have uh, more people accessing our EDs, that we were able to respond quickly and again with the public health hotline uh, that swung into play immediately and we've taken um, I think now several hundred calls through that. In the main, uh, ensuring that people understand um, clearly what symptoms they should look for, but importantly also ensuring that we work with GPs and other health professionals, and uh, that has worked um, very well to this point in time. But in terms of the coronavirus, there will be some impacts, and one of the things that uh, obviously uh, Tasmania does rely on is our university and our international students. And I'm not sure if, um, if Rufus is here today, but I think I can, I can mention this. Um, I met with him last week to have a discussion and obviously it was reported that around 1,300 international students hadn't been able to make it back into Tasmania when the travel restrictions were first placed on. Uh, at this stage, only, uh, in fact, less than a handful of students had not re-signed into courses and over 80% had engaged uh, online. And so in terms of the student base, I think that uh, the university is doing everything it possibly can in terms of reaching out and working with its population in a very positive way to ensure that we can continue that engagement and I'd uh, congratulate the university for that. Uh, the challenge in our local economy is that the benefit of uh, an international student uh, felt, broadly speaking, 50-50 between the fees they pay to the university and then their investment into our local economy. And obviously whilst those students aren't here, whilst they're still engaged with the university, they won't be spending in our economy, nor will uh, family, friends and other relations be coming to visit them whilst uh, they're here. So 
Yeah, we obviously have a keen eye to when that travel restriction may be lifted. Um, I did note yesterday that the secondary school restrictions uh, were lifted but with a very high bar uh, in terms of um, how those students might be managed back into the country. Um, and uh, you know, we'll keep obviously a, a very close uh, eye on and engagement with um, the federal government in terms of where the broader restrictions are going to go because I think that um, as uh, Christina said, you know, there is a bounce back that will come once the restrictions uh, are lifted uh, and uh, people start to find their way back into our economies. In terms of where it might impact us, and again this will depend on the, the economies of New South Wales and Victoria. Tasmania receives its GST out of the GST pool and obviously last year in the budget I w uh, noted that there were headwinds, um, there was a confidence had fallen certainly in the Victorian and New South Wales property markets which we've heard this morning has bounced back um, uh, probably much quicker than what was expected. But that lack of confidence had played into consumer sentiment and we were seeing less spending and therefore the GST pool was written down. Uh, we wrote down our GST receipts by around 500 million last year and just recently in the mid-year report I wrote them down by another 270 million again. Uh, depending on what happens to the pool and to our relativities, there may be an impact on Tasmania but we won't know until we get closer to the budget. But that, uh, that's one challenge that uh, we may have to overcome. In terms of another challenge, I want to just talk about the issue of um, bushfires and some conversations that I had uh, last week with other treasurers. In terms of the bushfires, I can actually recall where I was in that period between Christmas and New Year this year when the fires were raging on the mainland and we had some record temperatures in Tasmania. And the conversations I was having then with the then Premier then about ensuring that we were ready to react um, should we have needed to. Uh, we were very fortunate in that the carnage uh, and the devastation that, um, that befell the eastern seaboard and other states uh, wasn't felt here to anywhere near that extent. We had some fires but we, um, we reacted quickly. Um, in fact I was just speaking with Lyndall um, a moment ago, she's a volunteer fire, per fire person I think is the right um, uh, terminology. And the way this year in terms of the uh, bushfire response was to hit it early, hit it hard and actually get it before it started and it actually it worked. Um, and we had lots of choppers and planes in the air uh, as soon as we saw smoke. But when you consider that Tasmania's footprint in terms of hectares is around 6.8 million hectares. So speaking with the Treasurer of Victoria and New South Wales last week, uh, Victoria lost over 5 million hectares. Uh, New South Wales more than 5 million, Queensland um, uh, were up there and I think it was around 1.8 to 2 million hectares. You look across the country, uh, the devastation was a, a level that we haven't seen um, in this country, certainly uh, not with the intensity that occurred and, and I should add um, to the 33 people that lost their lives, obviously um, uh, Tasmania um, sends its commiserations and its condolences because um, you know, it was a tragedy. But the question that we've got to face up to and, and consider is what do we do in Tasmania today to ensure that we are ready for next season's bushfires? You know, what are the adaptation measures that we need to take? What are the things that we need to do to make certain that if uh, it does occur, uh, that we've done everything that we possibly can to protect life, to protect property, to protect infrastructure, to protect the environment? And I'll talk about those things uh, in a couple of moments. Just to finish off on the mid-year report, uh, across the forward estimates, net operating balance surpluses, uh, net debt, there are two GFS net debt and net debt on the board there, 36.9 million. Um, that's a negative number, meaning positive cash. Uh, GFS net debt, once you wind out uh, leases um, and the capitalisation of leases as a result of ASB 16, I think it is, Tony, um, we hold $383 million worth of cash. Our infrastructure investment across the forward estimates is strong. Now, our budget and balance sheet is in good shape. It's in good shape um, and I think uh, everyone would be aware that when we brought down this report, we also announced that there was some significant spending that we were going to do into health uh, as well and I'll talk about that shortly. Now, in terms of our priorities, 
As a government, our priorities still remain strong financial management to build and maintain confidence, grow the economy, create jobs and invest more into health education and supporting vulnerable Tasmanians. That is what we have worked hard to do for the last six years and nothing will change. But there is more to be done in health, in housing, uh, growing opportunities across Tasmania. How do we create the bridge to link uh, people that can't quite grasp those opportunities in our economy um, with what is a strong and growing economy? And uh, I've announced a minister with a uh, particular focus on doing that because those bridges could be transport, they could be schools, they could be training. Um, there are a range of things and we need to engage and ensure that people do have the opportunity to, um, to step up. I'll just speak about health for a moment. Last week, in when we brought down the re revised estimates report, uh, I announced that we'd be putting $600 million into health. It's a point I made quite strongly on the day in that in the last two years, we have increased the number of people working in health by around 800. Over the period since we came to government, it's around 1,200 people. The vast majority are nurses, um, doctors, allied health professionals. But what we saw in 2017 was an increase in demand due to, to, to the flu epidemic. Um, at the end of that year, demand didn't abate, it grew again. And so what we saw from the 17-18 and 18-19 years was around 800 new staff being employed. Now, as a government, we've accepted that this is a new normal. And so we funded health to ensure that those uh, elevated levels of FTE are now locked in across the forward estimates and we funded right across the coming four years. That will provide certainty. Um, it was noted by the AMA and I was pleased that they did note that. It's um, not often that we get something positive from the AMA. Um, but they noted that uh, that will provide certainty and will enable us to plan um, uh, as we move forward. The other point I'd make as well is that I also announced that we need to look at how we can improve the IT uh, architecture and infrastructure across health. Uh, we have over 9,000 people employed. Um, we run a number of facilities and it's important that we can manage patient flow, that we can manage human resource matters, payroll, um, IT, other, other um, aspects of, um, of health management. We will need a significant investment and we'll have more to say on that as we move uh, closer to the, uh, the budget. I think it's important not only that we invest in health but we ensure that we are getting the best outcomes that we possibly can. Uh, from our health sector. And in terms of climate change, I'll, um, I'll chat uh, a little bit more about that uh, as we finish because one of the things that um, I think is really important uh, is, again, facing up to the challenge and accepting um, that we do have a variable, um, volatile climate and what we do now over the next six to nine months uh, is going to be very important in terms of standing as in good stead for the coming summer period. Now today, I also want to announce uh, today that we'll, we finalised the terms of reference for our state sector review. In terms of the state sector review, the, the State Service Act is 20 years old. Um, there are 29 employment directions, six ministerial directions. Um, we've got uh, over 31,000 Tasmanian State Service employees a six and a half billion dollar budget, um, schools, hospitals, and it's important that we can look at the act in a sensible way to ensure that we can get the outcomes that um, are going to provide better services for Tasmanians and ensure that we have a public sector that is fit for purpose. So in terms of the in terms of reference, uh, they include ways that we can look at innovation, how we can better deliver for communities, the efficiency and effectiveness of the broader public se sector, uh, greater collaboration between public and private sectors. And one thing I know is my time as Treasurer, I've been very pleased in terms of the interaction that we've had with the university. But you know, we have some of the smartest people in the room working in that university and I think that it's incumbent upon government to look at how we can have stronger relationships uh, and how we can engage with other private sector companies with a view to getting better outcomes uh, for Tasmanians. Now, I want to touch on climate change. In terms of the story that we've been telling in regards to where Tasmania stands, I don't think we've been loud enough. Right across, if you look at Tasmania's position, and this is not something that is the, uh, has been the province of this government. This has been something that has been worked on for decades in this state. 
and has put us into a position where we are one of the lowest net emitters, um, uh, not just in this country but in the world. And it's something that we should be very, very proud of. We were the first state to hit zero net emissions in 2016 based on 1990 levels. No one else in this country will get close to that. We have the lowest emissions per capita in Australia, one of the lowest in the world. Um, we generate around 25% of the world's, of, of the country's uh, renewable energy. And it's something that we should be enormously proud of. Uh, by 2022, we will be 100% renewable. Post-2022, um, we will be increasing the percentage share that we can uh, provide to the rest of the country to assist them as they transition to a greener energy base. We have spoken about the opportunities with hydrogen, and I'm pleased with John Perry here. I know the work that he's been undertaking in terms of um, working very hard to ensure uh, that we can attract and importantly um, that we can benefit as a state in terms of hydrogen and especially green hydrogen. And then there is the obvious opportunity that sits with uh, Project Marinus uh, and importantly the battery of the nation. And we are so well placed in Tasmania in terms of our renewable energy opportunities that I think that that will be uh, the next um, uh, important uh, revolution that we will see in terms of um, uh, development and opportunity here in Tasmania as that progresses. Now, from a climate change perspective, when I was at, uh, I was holidaying at Bridport um, at Christmas time. I had um, the period between Christmas and New Year there. And I was taken by some locals to uh, an area at the top of um, Bridport. And they pointed out to me that there was an, an area that had been managed by the council and had been, there had been burns, uh, fuel mitigation work that had been done, uh, tops out of some of the trees had been taken down. You could actually see the step down impact uh, or the step down effect of uh, the work that the council had taken on uh, to mitigate the effect of a fire that might come through and over the top of the hill. 500 metres down the road um, was, further, was a piece of crown land. Um, where no work had been done. And if the fire had come over the top of the hill, it would have been too late to put in a fire break at that particular time. And with many of our small communities around the state, um, we have uh, taken great steps forward in terms of the fuel mitigation strategy that we introduced six years ago, and with the amount of fuel mitigation burns that we've undertaken. But there is still more to be done. And one of the challenges that we face is that the window to burn is narrowing. Uh, research shows that the conditions um, uh, to actually get away a uh, fuel mitigation burn of a reasonable size at the right time, it's becoming increasingly more difficult. I just want to name on the right of the screen, this is the legislation uh, that uh, relates to fuel reduction or could relate to fuel reduction depending on the land tenure. And what we'll find for many people who are now motivated, and I know many public land managers that are now motivated in terms of ensuring that we can improve the safety of the state before the next bushfire season, that in many cases it can take three months or longer to get to a point where you're actually able to reduce fuel. Uh, the other challenges that we need to face up to as well is in many cases uh, the windows may be too small, even with the best of intentions or with all of the resourcing, and so we may, may need to look at reducing fuel through mechanical clearing and actually look at um, fuel breaks as opposed to fire breaks and actually make some decisions today uh, that are going to stand our community in good stead uh, when we get to the point where the fire does come over the hill and rather than it being too late to put in a fire break, we've actually got a fuel break there already to ensure that property is safe, life is safe, uh, that we protect the infrastructure and that we protect the environment. And I'll have more to say about this uh, in coming weeks. So I think it's absolutely important that we learn from the devastating, horrific circumstances that many Australians faced uh, over the last summer and that we do what we reasonably can to ensure that people are safe in Tasmania uh, and understand what options they have in terms of what they can do to make themselves safe. Now, in summary, we've got a nation-leading economy. The budget's in surplus. We have strong loan source uh, revenues. There are economic headwinds uh, and there is always going to be more to be done. Um, 
you know, I must say, I think certainly in the tourism space that um, you know, the there is an opportunity there based for Tasmania based on the fact that the vast majority of our uh, visitors come from that eastern seaboard. Um, I think that in terms of climate change, it presents both enormous opportunities and challenges. Uh, and I think the time is right for us to have that discussion and that debate uh, here in Tasmania. Uh, and importantly, the state sector, which is critical to delivering the government's priorities um, over the coming 12 months, uh, Ian Watt will conduct that state service review, supported by a reference panel, which will include both representatives of unions, um, of the private sector, uh, of the university sector, I think, as well, um, uh, and the public sector. And by the end of the year, we will have some recommendations on what we can do to ensure that we have a fit for purpose uh, public service for the next 20 years uh, moving forward. So that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.